2.2 minutes. And but I said I have to take Michael before I get up. Uh, I mean, I have to I have to speak to you. You've been so supportive, and I want to thank you, Michael. Well, I wish I could say the same about uh, my fellow, uh, let us say, travelers in, in the conservative universe. I don't know what they're thinking. You're the only hope we have. Everyone I know who's worth anything in the world, and it doesn't matter whether they're rich or poor, worth something in terms of brains, is going to vote for you, loves you. Now, I personally, Don, will have to ask you, is Iowa that important? Well, I think psychologically it is. I mean, I've seen it. Uh, now, actually, for 16 years, they haven't picked the winner, and I always tell them that. You haven't picked a winner in 16 years. Come on, folks, you've got to pick a winner this time. But I will say that for me, you, you see what's going on in New Hampshire. I have a 28-point lead in the, next, uh, in the last poll that came out about an hour ago. A 28-point lead. I never even heard of a lead like that. That sounds like an incumbent president running against, uh, like, nobody. But, uh, well, of course, so but New Hampshire may be more representative of a certain population of America, in my opinion, Donald. And I, I'm not denigrating the good people of Iowa. Believe me, I'm on three stations in Iowa. But we're living in a different America than it was in 1820. Yeah, but it's an amazing custom. It's amazing tradition. The people here are incredible. And it's sort of a, it's a way of life. It's an amazing group of people. I love it. I really love it. I like it. And I told them, I said, if I win, you know, there's been a movement to move Iowa down to the middle of the pack or even the back. And I said, it's never going to happen with me. It's, it's an incredible process. Even the whole caucusing thing, you know, it makes you, it makes you work harder. And there's something okay about that. But it Did makes you ever think you'd have to work, Donald, in your whole life, have you ever worked as hard as you are for this presidential campaign? I'll bet not. This is about, uh, this is getting right up there. I mean, I've been a work. <laughs> this, this is tougher than building in Atlantic City when you started. This is tougher than building in Manhattan, I'll tell you. But it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a great process. And, you know, I'm very, uh, I'm encouraged by when I look at the polls, uh, they have me leading in Iowa. They have me leading in New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada. They have me leading everywhere and nationally. Uh, and the well, Ted, Ted, Ted Cruz rolled his eyes. The only thing missing was holding up snakes to heaven. Yeah, What's he well, doing? Been, you have been so incredible to me, Michael, and I really appreciate it. And you really have been, too, right from the beginning. And well, I, you know, you know I, I'm not doing it because I want anything, Donald. The truth is, is that I'm kind of independent of need. The issue is America is in desperately bad shape. America is so sick that it's going to take a strong man with a tremendously powerful ego like yours to override the psychosis uh, called politics. That's why we're all behind you, Donald. We know that you can actually get things done. I'll get it done, Michael. I'll tell you what, people will be so happy and they'll be so proud of our country again. And it's like, you know, make America great again. It's a great theme. It's a great slogan. But it's true, and it's not going to be as difficult as people think. However, if we go through another three years, four years of the Obama stuff with Hillary or whoever it happens to be, I don't know if Hillary's going to be able to run with this, with the things that are coming down now with the FBI and with what she's done. I don't know that she's going to be able to run, to be honest with you. Plus, a new poll just came out. Now she's behind in Iowa. That would be a big loss for her, I think, Michael, losing Iowa and then New Hampshire, I think. Psychological. You mean if she? You mean if she loses to the commie from Brooklyn? Yeah, he's probably is a he's probably a communist, but let's call him a serious socialist. But he probably could go a step further than that, right? Donna, last question of the day: Are you gathering demographics which Republicans have had a hard time with in the past? Meaning minorities. I know that I hear it on my show: minorities who won't vote for Republican in their whole life want. Want to vote for you? Is that what your polls, posters are showing? I think so. And in fact, yesterday in the New York Post, there was a big article where I'm leading with Hispanics and and people that are in the country legally. Hispanics are. You probably saw that article. It was an amazing article. But I'm also getting a lot of people, and we see it even here, where a lot of Democrats are coming over and they're changing their party affiliation to the Republican because, don't forget, the Republicans have a structural disadvantage. There are fewer of them, and Various other things. You know, they have a state advantage, a state disadvantage, because certain states are automatically, you know, with the with the college, with the electoral college, certain states are absolutely going Democrat. What happens? And this is important, Michael. I think I have a chance of getting New York. I have a chance of getting Michigan. I have a chance of getting, you know, a lot of states that a lot of these people, these other candidates, it would never even be a possibility to get them. And they're saying that Trump is going to win. For instance, Michigan. I'm going to win Michigan. 
uh, we're going to do great in Ohio and Florida and different places that, frankly, and Virginia is another one, and West Virginia, places that have not been good to the Republicans, Trump is going to win. And if that happens, you end up having a tremendous advantage. And none of the other candidates are going to get there, Michael. So, you know, Donald, what final message do you want to leave before the caucuses tonight on the Savage Nation? We're on three big stations in Iowa. The whole world is watching Iowa, even though I don't think it's is structurally that significant. It is symbolically very significant. I hope you win. Uh, you've been running a tough campaign. Any final message to the world? I think, only Michael, that I've been working very hard. I've spent a lot of time out here. I've spent a lot of time in all of the different places, New Hampshire, and the next after that would be South Carolina, all amazing places. But I will tell you this. The people of this country, and you've known this better than anybody, the people of this country are incredible. More than anything else, that's what I have found. You have to see the love for this country. The mm -hmm. people are incredible. And I leave that message. And, of course, always vote for Trump. Right? Donald, you want to hear the message that's the winning one? Borders, language, culture. Even though you haven't used my slogan, in essence, that's what you have been saying in a different way. And that's why I'm 100% behind you, as are my listeners. I'll let you go. Thank you so much. We wish you luck, and hopefully we'll see you at least once before you're president. 100%, Michael. I'll speak to you a lot, and you take care of yourself. And you're right, we're going to have very, very strong borders. Those days are over where people just flow into the country like water. It's not going to happen that way. So I want Amen. to thank you, Michael. You take care of yourself. Thank you, Donald. Thank you very much, Mr. Trump. Right back on The Savage Nation. All right, don't get your hopes up. Remember what Joseph Stalin said. It doesn't matter who votes. It matters who counts the votes. Take a guess who's counting the votes in Iowa. It's none other than open borders himself and the tax evader. From Microsoft, that's right. Microsoft is counting the votes, and they've already announced Hillary the winner. I'm not making this up. Microsoft calls Iowa for Hillary before it helps count the vote. I'm not making it up. Microsoft's Bing technology has called Iowa for Hillary Clinton. Uh, Bernie Sanders voters are not, happen, are not happy. This is an app that was created by Microsoft to tally the vote during tonight's caucus. Microsoft says that using data from polls, prediction markets, and uh, anonymized aggregated search engine queries to predict its results, Bill Gates' stooges at Microsoft forecast that Hillary Clinton will win three of the first four Democratic primaries, taking Iowa, South Carolina, and Nevada, with Bernie Sanders taking New Hampshire. How is it possible that Microsoft is counting the votes? How is it even possible that in a day and age such as ours, we would permit a, a, a company with such a bias towards open borders, towards loose tax policies, which permit them to get away with paying almost no taxes on corporate income, which they hide overseas? How is this even possible? I answered my own question. How? They're calling for the candidate who wants a continuation of open borders and lacks tax policies. That's all. Any other questions? Because I got the answers. This is the Savage Nation. Two hours flew by faster than a 16 millimeter shell from a U, from a from the USS Iowa during World War II. It went by like a freight train overhead. All I can say is it's good to be living in interesting times. Another big hour across America. Sorry, not in your market. I can't control that. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7287. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. All 
right, here come Tuesday. Well, it's Monday. And I'm going to ask you a question again, which I've asked earlier. Is the Caucasian caucus in Iowa representative of voters themselves? The answer is no. And that's why no matter what happens tonight, people are going to cheer or they're going to cry. I don't think it really means that much. And Donald Trump was on the show. He said it has more of a psychological uh, meaning than anything else. What is a caucus? What does it mean? Tell me what it actually means. Any voter registered with a party can participate in a caucus. But fewer eligible voters take part in a caucus because it's a more time-consuming process. And the process, my friends, is dominated by apparatchiks in both parties. Party activists, apparatchiks, the true believers, the workers, the people who put on funny hats, the people who eat the bad meals and float balloons at the Manchurian candidate conventions. They're the ones who go there. So the real ones, I don't know what the real voters are going to do. It's snowing there anyway. Very bad weather. And uh, the question is, who's going to really turn out? The apparatchiks. So is it representative? I don't know. It's psychological. That we do know. Trump is leading in the polls. And we don't know what's going to happen tonight. And if he loses, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, the media will go insane. Oh, he's, I told you last week, blood in the water. Remember my show of Thursday? Remember I pioneered the idea of a theme for every show? Hasn't been copied much yet, but soon will be. Every show has a theme. Today's theme is the Caucasian Caucus. The theme for last week's show was Blood in the Water. Remember, that's a great show. One of my best monologues of all time. No one even saw it except my listeners. I think I, I don't even know where it is. It was so well done. Here it is. Here, Blood in the Water. Purists versus pragmatists. And in that monologue, what I said was this. Trump is the man on the white horse. And when Fox turned on him, they saw a chink in Trump's armor, so to speak, and that caused a little bit of blood to come out of Trump. And the sharks are going crazy. They smell blood in the water. They want that wound opened up even further. They want to see that knight in shining armor on the ground bleeding to death, vanquished at last by the Democrat, socialist, Islamist media complex. That's what I said, and I, I, I don't believe I was wrong. I believe I was 100% right. So should he not win tonight? They're probably praying that Cruz wins, by the way. They're praying that Cruz wins. Or Rubio, they would pray to God that a, an establishment candidate like the ice cream man wins. Or they'll take even Cruz over Trump because they want him, let's say, beaten. They want him stumbling. They want to see him take a major blow, a body blow. That's what they want. And that, that'll be tomorrow. You won't believe what goes on. Mike Wall uh, The worst of them will be Mike Wallace, Meat Loaf Jr. The, the sneer on Meat Loaf Jr.'s face will never have been better. Uh, Megyn Kelly, if Trump loses in Iowa, she'll have to cut her hair even closer. She'll start to look like Shanita O'Connor before this is over. Every time Trump loses, she'll have to trim off a little more hair to look like Shanita O'Connor, if that's how you pronounce it. I don't understand my Gaelic. I'm sorry. I was never good at my Gaelic. I don't know why you pronounce S-I-N-E-A-D as Schneed. To me, it's Sinead, but okay, it's not Sinead, it's Schneed. I don't even think it's Schneed, but you get the picture. And the phone number, you got the phone number, 855-407-282, and we're talking about the poison pills that Obama has put into the body politic, military, etc. Rachel takes umbrage with my uh, disdain for the military saying that Troops can now breastfeed in the military. I have nothing against breastfeeding. In fact, I wrote books in favor of it through my career as a health researcher and a health writer. But I think that the military is different than Google and Microsoft in so many ways that you can't apply the same workplace, uh, what's the word, psychology to the military, especially on the front lines. This is not about the DOD people in office. Is the DOD will allow troops on duty to breastfeed. How is that going to better our ability to fight and win a war? That's what I want to know. That's all I care about. Rachel on MAL, you disagree. That's why we give you the podium on the Savage Nation. Fire away. Yeah, I, I am fully in agreement with Mr. Carter's new DOD breastfeeding uh, room policy. You know, it's whenever you have the time and when you can do it. But, you know, I've been in the military for over 14 years. I've okay, so let me, do you mean, are you a troop on the, you're going to fight in combat and have breastfeeding? Well, when you're in 